Hello and welcome to Government Unit 2. Today's video is all about the executive branch. So, the executive branch is the presidency and everybody who works for him. Simple as that. Its main goal is the enforcement of law. Yeah, he can write laws and propose them, but that's what Congress gets to decide. The president only really has the power to enforce the laws. He can't actually make the laws. So how do you become president? Well, you have to meet a certain amount of requirements. First is you have to be at least 35. You have to be a citizen who is naturally born in America. You can't be one that became a citizen later on in life. And you must have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. Now, the president, like I said before, is the leader of many, many people. He's the leader of the executive branch, which is a huge, huge branch. So as the leader of the executive branch, he has a certain number of hats or roles that he has to fill. The first is chief executive. That's what I was talking about earlier. The one who's enforcing federal laws. He's also the commander in chief. He is the top military leader in the entire nation. He is also the chief diplomat. Congress is the one who makes treaties and agreements with other countries, but those agreements get discussed and planned out through the president. He's the one that actually meets with all these foreign leaders, not Congress. Though they can, it's primarily the job of the president. He is the legislative leader. He can't make laws, but he is a very well-known person. He's very famous, and he has a lot of support. So when he writes a law, even though he can't make it a law himself, it has a high chance of succeeding just because he's the one who wrote it. So a lot of people have to think carefully before they vote against the president because that means they're going to lose his many, many supporters. Now, maybe that doesn't affect them. Maybe they do it anyways. That happens often. But still, you can't ignore him as a senator or a House of Representative the way you might be able to ignore a regular citizen. And finally, the president is the one who selects federal judges, the judges who decide whether or not someone is guilty of a federal crime. Now, some of these jobs are more well-defined than others. For example, chief diplomat. Congress makes treaties, but they're not the ones who actually talk to the people the treaties are with, the agreements. That's kind of weird. That's just one example of a part of the job that was formed by George Washington. George Washington is famous and important, not just because he was the first, but because the presidency wasn't really clearly defined when the Constitution was first signed into power the way it has become defined over time. And that is because people were afraid of giving him too much power. So George Washington's actions and choices set examples for the future of how we see presidents and what power we allow them to have and what we expect them to do. For example, executive privilege. This is one of those things that's not really in the Constitution, but it is something that presidents have, a power that they have, that Washington was the first one to use. This power of executive privilege allows the president to deny Congress or anybody the right to look at any recordings of meetings or anything that he said or any discussions if he decides that's national security. If I give you this information, that will cause harm to the country. There are limits to this, but they're not well defined because the power itself is not super clear about well, when can he say it and when is it not acceptable for him to say it. Because there's presidents who've said it and Congress said, okay, well, you get to do that. And then there's presidents who said, oh, executive privilege, you can't use this like President Nixon. And Congress said, no. No, you're just using this to cover up your own slimy stuff. We want those records. But back to the idea of him being the leader of a large executive branch. Just like Congress is split into committees, the executive branch is split up into different agencies that cover different topics like alcohol and tobacco, uh, drugs, education, foreign relationships, uh, 
prosecuting people that the government thinks has broken federal law. And each of these departments, these agencies, has their own leader that reports directly to the president and advises him on what they think he, he should do or what they should do in his name. One example is the attorney general. The attorney general is the one who represents the president if he were ever to get sued. He's the one that lets him know whether a certain plan he has is illegal or not. And he's also the one that will lead prosecutions of individuals who violate federal law. Another example is the Secretary of State. The president does not have time to meet all the leaders of the world when he needs to speak with them, which is often. So when he doesn't have time, he'll send his Secretary of State. And that individual will meet with the foreign leader with all the power and all the authority of the president. Because they would have planned out ahead of time what the president finds acceptable and what he doesn't. And the Secretary of State sticks within those rules because that's, that's that person's job. Now, some of these agencies you are familiar with, some of them you're not. Ones that you've definitely heard of are the CIA. That's our intelligence, our spy network. Uh, NASA, send rockets to the moon, explore space. That's an agency of the executive branch. Uh, one you haven't heard of or you might have noticed but didn't really know what they do is the FDIC. They're the ones that insure people's bank deposits to make sure that your money will always be in the bank if you have money in the bank. And that gives you a pretty good idea of what the executive branch is and what it does and what its powers are. If you have any questions, let me know in class. Thank you.